إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما we start as we always do first and foremost by praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We show him our Lord, our Master, our God, our Creator, the utmost gratitude and appreciation. And we praise him and we compliment him and we acknowledge all of his infinite endless blessings upon us. And on this beautiful special day of Friday, the day that we gather together to remember Allah, to declare the greatness and supremacy of Allah, we bear witness and we testify that there is nothing worthy of our worship our unquestioned devotion, except the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mighty, majestic, perfect, and amazing is He. And we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His prophet, is His messenger, and is a messenger to us as our role model and guide. May Allah bless him, his family, his followers, his companions, and everyone that follows their way and legacy until the end of time. Will Allah include us from amongst them. Allah, he reminds us, believers, have the taqwa of Allah. Shield yourself and protect yourself from the anger and punishment of Allah by doing what he tells you to do and staying away from what he tells you not to do. Do that the way Allah deserves and don't die except that you are submitting to Allah. And again, he reminds us, believers, have the taqwa of Allah. Shield and protect yourself from the fire of hell by obeying the commandments of Allah, by staying away from his prohibitions and speak the truth. Whoever then obeys Allah, whoever then has taqwa and speaks the truth, Allah will forgive your sins. Allah will fix and correct your actions. Whoever then truly obeys Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah bless and protect him, will have the true victory in this life and in the life to come. Us as an entire ummah, for a month and a half now, we have been in a very dire, difficult situation. And I want us to remind ourselves that we should be reminding one another. That there, this is a time when even if it, we may feel it has been repeated for the third week, the fourth week, the fifth week, the sixth week, that there is benefit to reminding. And there is an incident that happened in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where in a nearby tribe they came to him, they came saying, we have become Muslim, we have accepted Islam. Can you, O Prophet Muhammad, send us people to teach us Qur'an? Can you send us people that will be our teachers in this new faith that we have just entered? Can you send some people to teach us? And so the Prophet wasallam, happy that there is a new tribe that wants to become Muslim, that wants to learn this, the, the faith, the religion of Allah, he sent them 70 of the Sahaba, 70 companions that could teach them how to read Qur'an, 70 companions that could teach them how to pray Salah, 70 companions that can teach them the basics and fun, fun, the foundations of Islam. When that tribe, they left, they went with the Sahaba, they ambushed those 70 Sahaba. That tribe that had claimed to be Muslim, asking for teachers, backstabbed the Muslims, ambushed them, and killed those Sahaba, killed those companions. And this was an incident that took place over the span of one day, or even a couple of hours. And for that one day, for that one incident, for that one occurrence, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Salatul Fajr made dua against them, harsh, blunt dua against them for 30 days. For a one day incident. One day they took the life of 70 Muslims. One day one group ambushed and unjustly took the lives of 70 Sahaba. And for 30 days in retaliation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua against them. We have not seen one day of aggression. Heck, we haven't even seen a month and a half of aggression. We've seen 60, 70, 80 years worth of oppression. For us to stand and make dua 
for the justice of our brothers and sisters, that Allah gives them help and support, that Allah deals with and removes their oppressors. There is nothing abnormal about this. There is nothing wrong with us to do this. This is as has been taught to us by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we follow in his legacy. We follow his teachings. We follow his guidance. And just like he made dua against those oppressors, we continue to make dua against the oppressors that are in the apartheid regime, regardless of who they are. And I want to remind ourselves that even if this zulm, this oppression, this massacre was not in Gaza, even if it was not in the holy, blessed, sacred lands of Asham, and even if it wasn't against Muslims, if there is zulm anywhere, I as a Muslim will stand up. If there is oppression anywhere, I as a Muslim should speak out. I as a Muslim will not stand for oppression, the murder of innocent people, anywhere to whoever it is. But it is not just the loss of innocent life. It is the loss of innocent life on top of the loss of Muslim life. The loss of people who share the same faith as us, who have accepted that there is no God other than the one true God, Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa But it doesn't even end there. It's not just the loss of innocent life and oppression. It is not just the loss of innocent Muslim life. It is the loss of innocent Muslim life in a place, in a land, in an area that Allah has repeatedly talked about its greatness and its blessings. We know that our forefather, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made dua, Oh Allah, make Mecca a special, sacred, blessed place. And Allah accepted that dua. And our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he moved to Medina, he said, Oh Allah, Ibrahim made dua for Mecca, I am making dua for Medina. Oh Allah, make Al-Medina, Al-Munawwar, a blessed, special, sanctified place. Who made dua for Aqsa? Who made dua for Sham? Who made dua for the lands of Syria, of Palestine, of Jordan, of Lebanon? Allah Himself made it blessed. Allah Himself made it blessed. As a reminder, sometimes we get caught up in the details. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I want us to just go back just a little bit. That these lands are special to us as Muslims. But we know the famous night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took our beloved prophet and messenger for the most amazing experience of his life. Allah took him to meet him. Allah took him past the seven heavens. Allah gave him a tour of Jannah. Is Quds on the way? Is Aqsa, is Sham on the way from Mecca to the heavens? It is not. Why did Allah choose to take the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa first from Mecca to, excuse me, to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, because this place is special and sacred. And as Allah, He says, Subhana alladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-Masjid Al-Haram ila al-Masjid Al-Aqsa alladhi barakna hawla. How perfect is the one who took his slave in the middle of the night and traveled with him and took him from the, the, the sacred house in Mecca to the furthest mosque, the, that mosque which we have blessed its surroundings. Allah himself has made this land special and blessed. And like we just said, what Muslim's heart does not feel affinity and gravitate towards the city of Medina? This is the place of Muslims. This is Darul Hijrah. This is where the Muslims move to. Quds is also the place where prophets move to. When Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Prophet Lut alayhi salam, they didn't have a place to go. They were running out of, 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 of Mesopotamia. They had nowhere to go. They couldn't practice. They couldn't preach their faith. And Allah, he says, We saved and we took Prophet Ibrahim and we took his nephew Prophet Lut. We saved them and we moved them to a place that we have blessed. The Darul Hijrah, from the children of Ishaq, is Quds. The city they migrated to, they did Hijrah to, is Al Quds. And our love and reverence for Medina, we know. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, one of our greatest Imams, he wouldn't walk with his sandals in the streets of Medina. He wouldn't ride his donkey in the streets of Medina. Why? My Prophet's footsteps were here. What audacity does a heartless person have? to violate these lands and to drop bombs and to kill people and shed blood. We don't, we are worried to walk with our sandals on the sand of Medina. How many prophets walked through Aqsa? Ibrahim, Lut, Ishaq, 
يعقوب يوسف بنيامين موسى هارون داود سليمان زكريا يحيى عيسى and his mother مريم and this is just the names we have in Quran how many more prophets walked on this land how do you violate the sanctity of this land the only people that do that is if you have no care for the hereafter you have no worry about the consequences you have become self deluded and these lands are special to us but as we have seen me telling us about the specialness of this land is important but there's also action that I have to do. There's also something that I have to do to help my brothers and my sisters, even if not by blood, but through Iman. That what can I do for them? Allah, He tells the Prophet Wasallam this, and by extension, us. فَإِمَّا نَذْهَبَنَّ بِكَ فَإِنَّا مِنْهُمْ مُنْتَقِمُونَ أَوْ نُرِيَنَّكَ الَّذِي وَعَدَنَاهُمْ فَإِنَّا عَلَيْهِمْ مُقْتَدِرُونَ فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ إِنَّكَ عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ Allah, he tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and by extension us, that I will, I can perhaps remove you. I will take your soul. You will no longer be alive. And I will be the one to take vengeance and avenge you that have been lost. You Muslims, you may not live long enough for me for you to see the victory that I will bring but even if you're not alive to see it I will make sure the oppressors are repaid for their injustices or I, you will live long enough to see it with your own two eyes because guess what we are completely capable of dealing with them but what do I do in the meantime? فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ So stick to, grab onto, hold on to what has been revealed to you. إِنَّكَ عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ You are on the true, correct, right path. وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرُ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ This Qur'an, this revelation has reminders for you. It has guidance for you. It will uplift your spirits. It will tell you to not be sad. It will tell you to not be afraid. It will tell you to not lose hope. Because this is guidance and revelation from Allah wa sofa tus'alun, and you'll be asked about this. And so what am I doing in my time right now? What have I learned from the Qur'an? What have I learned from the seerah for me to act and to do? As we know, we as Muslims, we do not lose hope in Allah. Our unwavering hope in Allah should never be challenged. Never should there come a time where I should doubt the help, the victory of Allah. Even if I don't think it's going to happen right now or five minutes from now or one day from now or one year from now, I should never doubt Allah's help and victory will come. It will come. And especially because Allah has promised that these lands will remain lands of Muslims. That at the end of times, this is where the Muslims will be. This is where the Muslims will be a stronghold until the end of times. Allah has already promised this to us. The Prophet Sallallahu has already told this to us. Do Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu lie? No, they do not. They do not break their promises. So if they have told us this will be a place that Muslims will remain, guess what? It will be a place that Muslims will remain. Whether I can imagine it or not, whether I can see a feasible way for that to take place or not, it will happen. Do not lose hope. The only people that lose hope in Allah are the disbelievers. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رُوحِ اللَّهِ do not lose hope in the ruh of Allah, the rahmah of Allah, the compassion of Allah. Ruh can also mean faraj, the victory, the, the exit. When you don't even see the light at the end of the tunnel, Allah will give you the light at the end of the tunnel. That faraj will come only through Allah. The only people that do not that lose hope in Allah's rahmah, in Allah's compassion, in Allah's victory, in Allah's safety, in Allah's protection, in Allah giving you a way out, are those people that don't believe. And we have been blessed with Iman. My brothers and sisters, do not lose Iman. Do not lose hope in Allah. And because we believe in Allah, because we know He is completely powerful and capable, we know that everything in this world is, belongs to Him, and it's everything is under His control. If He chooses to wipe everything out, He can. And so we make dua. We beg Him, we implore Him, we call upon Him. And I encourage us to not be those who get lazy, who do, those who, who lose hope in Allah. I ask you and myself, 
If I am deeply disturbed by this and worried about this, do I make dua for Gaza in Palestine after every salah? Every salah, do I make even one, even a five second dua for them? Am I coming to Fajr salah so I can take part in Qunut? The dua that has been taught to us by the Prophet in times of distress, that dua is being made particularly for this. Am I waking up in the middle of the night, in the last third of the night, and making dua? Allah said, Fastamsik, hold on to what I have revealed to you. This is what He's revealed to us. Make dua, beg Him. So we do not lose hope. And because we have hope, we ask Him and we beg Him. And Allah has taught us that we ask and then we put our means forward. When we have tawakkul in Allah, when we rely on Allah, I'm also then doing something on top of that. Am I writing letters? Am I making phone calls? Am I writing emails? Am I going to rallies? And again, we may, again, it's been a, it's been a long month and a half. And we may feel tired. We may feel that things aren't happening. But I will tell you my own anecdote. Last year when issues happened there, my CEO sent an email praying only for the apartheid state. Only for the apartheid regime. If people didn't speak up, if people didn't say anything, why then would my CEO's email this year say, we care about the innocent lives lost on both sides, here's a link to donate. Is change happening? It took a year to get a little bit closer, it's not perfect. It's not that there isn't anything wrong with that statement, right? But we're moving in the right direction. Am, did I email my boss? Did I reach out to my principal? Did I go to my dean? I know the deans of our universities here are, are, are extra difficult to work with, but am I at least going to them and telling them? Am I telling my coworkers? Am I telling my employer? Am I going to the people in my local government around me? Even if they're loonies like we've seen, you know, one of the people in Diamond Bar, right? But am I going and speaking? Am I going and raising my voice? Am I going and mentioning something? It may take time, but we hope that something will happen. Change is not on me, change is on Allah, but I have to be doing something. And so am I going and speaking out? And be it my boss, be it my government, but also think about all the other environments that I have. Right? Many times uh, uh, when, when we talk about you know, law enforcement and, and district attorneys and judges, we feel very uncomfortable. But our, the LAPD, like LA, Los Angeles, the police department, they have been training with the Israeli military for like two decades, if not more. Am I going to say something about that? Do I want the people guarding the protests to be someone who was trained in the very place that I'm protesting against? Am I going to go and think about who my sheriff is and go and be totally fine with the police department that is trained by people who are committing war crimes right now? If anyone's just like, yeah, that's okay, they're the police. What iman is in your heart? What iman is in your heart? Go and do something. Go and tell them. Go to deadly exchange and figure out what's going on and speak out against this. And the very officers who will then lie about the district attorney who has been pressured to make a statement in favor of Israel but has not. Do we know that? Do we know that the district attorney of, of, of LA who has been not said anything pro-Israel but some Muslims have a sentiment of get this person out. He is the only one who hasn't budged. So it's not just my politics of my city councilors and, and my congressmen, law enforcement, the judges, the police. Because if, I, you know, we pick our judges, in, right? We vote for some of the judges to come and take the seat. If my son, my daughter, my child, my friend said free Palestine at work or said free Palestine on campus or said free Palestine at a protest and then they are getting sued and then they have to go to court for defamation, well, shouldn't I care who the judge that's overseeing that case is? So that they're sane and they don't throw children into jails by taking bribes? We have judges like that. So look at who the people are around us. And if I can't do anything, at least for the love of Allah, I don't know who is right and who is wrong in terms of the po political realm. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rizuqna at Oh Allah, show me what is the truth as truth so I can follow it. Because it's a whole mess.
and is difficult and is challenging, but oh Allah, give me some light, give me some guidance that I can say something that will be beneficial, that I can do something that will be some positive form of help. I'm not going to change the whole world, but I can change something. I can have some small impact. Someone will hear my voice. Someone will change because of the entire group that is speaking out. And so do something. Do something. There is do not lose hope. Continue to make dua. Put your money where your mouth is. Am I donating to causes and organizations that will help resolve this issue? Am I going and sending money in whatever responsible way I can over there so it helps my brothers and sisters? And again, I want to remind us, it's been a long month and a half. Do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. And how can I lose hope? Right? There's another sentiment, I'll briefly touch on this, where I just, I just want to leave this country. This country's a messed up place. No doubt it is. But around the world, if there was one country whose change would make a difference it would probably be America. If, I, if we all were to leave, who would be left here? Only people that say, give them more money. So if I stay here and I speak up, if I leave this country, no one will be left here to say, don't give them money. So I should stay here and I should be the one to say, please, for the love of God, for the love of humanity, if you don't believe in God for whatever reason, don't endorse genocide. So if we're feeling, should I leave because I'm feeling worried, I'm feeling distressed, there is a point to you being here. So take advantage of that. And within that same vein, we may feel guilty. Do not feel guilty. Be grateful for the position Allah has put you in. Allah has given me money. Allah has given me a home in Southern California. Allah has given me a job, a voice, a social media account. Use it. Do shukr. Use these in the best way. Use these in the best way. Use these in the best way. And hopefully, Allah has told us his victory will come. And how can I lose hope? How can I feel worried when again Allah and my Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa have told us believers will remain in these special lands until the end of time? He doesn't lie. He doesn't just speak out of his mouth frivolously. It is revelation. When he tells me there will be Muslims here who will be the stronghold until the end of time, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And the last point I will make on brothers and sisters, do not lose hope. How can I lose hope? How can I lose hope? When my brothers and sisters there have not lost hope. They have Iman. While they're going through it. Shouldn't I have more Iman? Because I'm in the luxury of my own home. They have Tawakkul. They are living it. Showing it. Shouldn't I have Tawakkul? They are showing Sabr. And passing the test of Sabr with flying colors. Should I not have some of that? Their Iman, their Yaqeen, their Tawakkul, their Sabr is off the charts. Why am I losing hope? Their iman is 110. Allah tells us, was, was And they're doing it. How can I lose hope when people say you can smell musk from their shuhada? You can smell perfume coming off of those people who have lost their lives who have been martyred. People are, t I can smell the perfume coming off their body. You think they broke a bottle of perfume on them? You think they have the time to go and spray musk on themselves? Where is this musk, this misk, ra'iya coming from? Where are these sweet smells coming from? If that is happening there, how do I lose hope? How do I lose hope? And as Allah himself tells the believers when they were going through the toughest times in Mecca, you think you will just walk into Jannah without having been tested? It may not feel like we're being tested. And our test is much lighter. But my money, my status, my voice is a test. It is a test. 
My weekends are a test. My evenings right now are a test. The difficulty of it, that it is for me to push the, fill out the form and push send, that is a test for me. Am I doing that? But Allah, he tells him, do you think you're just going to walk into Jannah without a test when you haven't been faced with the difficulties that people have faced before you? Masatumul ba'sa, problems in terms of uh, military fighting, what darra, you know, financial and food and water distress. وَزُلْزِلُوا Until they're shaken up. Until even the Messenger of Allah and His followers say, مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهُ When is the help of Allah? We may be feeling like that. We may be going through that. And just let the words reverberate through your heart. أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ The help, the victory of Allah is near. أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ The help and the victory of Allah is near. The help and the victory of Allah is near. Do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. You have a place. You have a status. You have a say. You can do something. Do it. Do it. May Allah give us all the ability to do everything within our ability and make Allah relieve the difficulties of our brothers and sisters. And may Allah deal with their Zionist apartheid oppressors. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum li sa'i al-muslimin. Fa astaghfiru fa inu al-ghafur rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ادخلنا جنتك جنة الفردوس الأعلى بغير حساب ولا عذاب ما حبيبك ورسولك اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا في غزة اللهم كن لهم ناصرا ومعينا ومؤيدا وظهيرا اللهم استر عوراتهم وآمن روعاتهم وأمن خوفهم اللهم أفرغ عليهم صبرا واستقامة اللهم ثبت أقدامهم اللهم أيدهم بتأييدك اللهم أيدهم بتأييدك اللهم زدهم عددا وعددا اللهم ارزق قتلهم الشهادة اللهم عليك بالصهاينة الغاصبين المجرمين الظالمين اللهم لا تجعلنا من الظالمين اللهم عليك بهم اللهم إنهم منعوا عبادك من الماء والطعام وقتلوا عبادك اللهم قتلهم تقتيلا ومزقهم كل ممزق اللهم اجعل هلاكهم عبرة وآية للناس حتى لا يظلم بعضهم أحدا أحد اللهم عليك بهم اللهم عليك بهم اللهم أرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك و بدائع صنعق ربنا لا تذر على الأرض للصهاينة ديارا صب عليهم سوط عذاب اللهم أعيد المسجد الأقصى إلى أيد المسلمين Allah return Aqsa and the masjid and the surrounding lands safely and peacefully back to us as Muslims to those people whose houses those are whose homes those are whose lands those are O oh Allah give them peace and victory and safety and security. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. Aqim as-salah.